You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. I'm very happy to have on the Goldstein on Geld show Dr. Arthur Benjamin, who's a professor of math, and he's a magician. In fact, he's kind of a mathematical magician. Art, it's a pleasure to have you. Nice to be here. So one of the things that I've seen you talk about, and in fact, my kids have seen you talk about in your TED Talks and, and uh, on some of your courses, is improving your math skills. There are a lot of people out there who are afraid of math. Is it really possible to improve your math skills? Oh, absolutely. I think math mathematics is a skill just like anything else, like playing an instrument or or playing a sport or learning to type or learning to juggle. Things that might seem a little bit unnatural at first, but if you put your mind to it and you give yourself the right amount of practice, anybody, and I mean anybody, can get much better at it. So are you only talking about basic things like adding and subtracting? Well, it, well, certainly it's, it begins with arithmetic, and if, uh, I mean, all, almost all mathematics has a foundation of arithmetic, so it's important that you be comfortable with doing your addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, eventually percentages, fractions, decimals, um, but after you have that under your belt, um, it's important to, tr to go on to the next level of math, which is algebra. Um, beyond that, you have your you have your pick. You could study geometry, trigonometry, probability, statistics, calculus, uh, unlimited possibilities. Okay, so a lot of the the specialty that you have, or what you're really probably most known for, is mental math that you can do yeah, it in your head. Mm -hmm. What's the real benefit of doing it in your head as opposed to buying a snazzy calculator? Yeah, why not just have a calculator? Well. I think if you're doing a, a, a large, important calculation, then, then of course you're going to want to go to your calculator. But for most of the time, most of the time, like when we're reading the newspaper, we're watching the news, we're listening to your excellent radio program, you want to be able to get a good mental estimate of what's going on. You know, you want to have a general ballpark figure. It's not important that you know the answer to the last penny, but it is important that you know that we're talking about something that might be $300 instead of $3,000 or $30. I mean, just to have a ballpark estimate is very important. And if you shy away from doing mental arithmetic, if you're afraid, if, if you can't do anything with your calculator, then you're just going to tune off when people start talking numbers at you. That's very true. In fact, a long time ago, we had on the show here memory expert Harry Lorraine. Oh, yeah. The, the previous generation. In fact, he's been a couple of times on the Goldstein on Geld show. I know, Harry. In one of his books on math, he pointed out that people always learn to do their addition from the right side instead of from the left side. So a kid yeah. learns to know exactly how many pennies there might be, but he never knows how many dollars, which is the critical thing. Absolutely. If I had to give three words of advice for doing mental math, it would be left to right. I mean, we do all of our, uh, on paper, we do it from right to left. As you say, we do the pennies before the dollars, before the hundreds of dollars. But in, if you want to do the problem mental, mentally, we read numbers left to right, we pronounce them left to right, we should say them left to right. Now, we should calculate them left to right. Absolutely. It's more important to know what the thousands are than to know what the pennies are. Yeah, certainly in my business. You know, my day job is that I'm a financial advisor. I do the radio gig once a week. But most mm -hmm. of the time I do financial plans and I work with clients really to talk about their long-term financial success. So if you had to apply math in the, in the world of finance, can you think of any ways that people could use a better mental math system in order to improve how they're handling their money? Well, I know, for example, the people who trade stocks a lot are very, very quick at the mental math. I mean, but that's, that, that's their profession. But probably as a group, they're about the quickest people around with, uh, with, doing, with doing mental math. In terms of people's own financing, I would say, well, you, you have to focus on the big numbers. Uh, and don't, don't be obsessed about getting the answer to the last penny. That that's probably not very that's probably not a effective use of your brain but but focus on the big numbers look at the big picture
just like in investing. So why do you suppose they don't teach kids that in the school? Well, I don't know. I think part of it is uh, the teachers – I think if you're doing – if you're focusing just on pencil and paper math, then yes, it is easier to work from right to left because you can line up your columns and first get the ones, then the tens and the hundreds. If I have, if I have to add up on paper a long column of numbers, then I even do that from right to left. But I, I, it's important that I get the answer you know, ex exactly right to the penny. Um, but if I'm doing a mental estimate, let's say I'm at the grocery store and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the items as they're being rung up and I just want to be able to anticipate roughly what the answer is, then it's important to do it from left to right. Don't get distracted by the pennies. Um, the other reason that they might not teach it in schools, and I don't know how, how the situation is in Israel, but I know a lot of the people who are teaching mathematics to our children in the United States are not exactly people who themselves loved mathematics when they were children. And that's a big, that's a problem, right? You have people who maybe were afraid of math who are now passing on that phobia to our kids. Hmm. Yeah. So that, I don't know how the situation is in Israel. Yeah. No, I think it happens everywhere. I certainly see a lot of times in client meetings, I'll sit with a husband and a wife and we'll talk about uh, you know, some of the, the basics of investing. And a lot of times one of the spouses just says, well, I'm not really good with the money. I leave that to my husband or to my wife. And I think it's funny. I'm, I'm not really talking about complicated money concepts. We're not talking about trading options. We're talking about knowing how much money is in your bank account so you don't bounce a check. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny what people are willing to admit. A lot of the people will say the same thing about math. They'll say, oh, I was never good at that. Whereas you never hear somebody say, oh, yeah, I struggled with reading for many years, mm -hmm. you know, because we know how important it is to be literate. But obviously in today's more technological, data-driven world, it's important to be numerate just as much. That's very true. We are talking with Dr. Arthur Benjamin, who's a professor of math. He's also a magician. In fact, uh, people may know him. You may have seen him. In fact, he's appeared on the Today Show and CNN and National Public Radio and in a TED Talk as well. Uh, but one of the things that's always a lot of fun for audiences is just watching him do math in his head. Now, for those of you on the radio, I want you to remember the old days when Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy used to be on the radio. Now, for those of you who don't know who that is, uh, that was a fabulous uh, ventriloquist and his ventriloquist dummy. So how could you possibly have people like that on the radio? I don't know, but in those days, people were very gullible. So not that I think the Goldstein on Gelt listeners are gullible, but Art, if you don't mind, let's just play a little game. I, I'm, uh, I've seen you, but let's give it a shot here. And, and you can see me because we're, we're here in front of each other. But, I mean, I hope your audience are critical thinkers, that they're skeptical, that they're not going to take anything on face value. So, But it's good that they trust, trust us as well. All right. And don't, you know, if they hear a little clicking of a calculator button, they'll know it's me and not you as we <laughs> ask you. So, for example, if you were to multiply 32 times 17, what would you say? We, where I would say that would be 544. Well, 32 times 17. I couldn't even type it that fast. Did you say 544? Hey. I certainly did. <laughs> All right, let's play it out. How about 325 squared? That would be 105,625. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, this is, this is getting cool. Okay, uh, my birthday, I was born in 1969 on, okay. on the 26th of November. Do you know what that was a Wednesday. Was? Yes, oh, wow. You and my mother know that. There we go. See, it's, it's great to tell people things about themselves. All right. So apart from the fun, and really uh, for all of you out there, Art does not have a calculator, nor did he have a calendar of uh, the year of my birth. How do you do some of these things? Well, it is all mathematical, everything that I do. It's, it's a skill that anybody can practice. Uh, you can learn about it in my, in my DVD course on the secrets of mental math produced by the great courses. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, I could go through, I could go through the process for you, but it's all calculations that I'm doing. I'm adding numbers, sub subtracting, dividing by seven, looking at the remainder, tells you that remainder will tell you the day of the week. Um, but it, as I said, it's, it's, it's a, it's a skill like typing or juggling that takes a little bit of time at first, but with a little bit of practice, um, it goes very quickly. So if you wanted to suggest to someone a way to get started, let's say someone who's really very calculator dependent, what mm -hmm. would be the first step that he should do to try to improve his math? Hmm. 
Um, well, I, I would I would try to do the problems without the calculator first, or before pr pressing the equals button, guessing what they think the answer is, and then looking at what the calculator says and seeing how close you are, making it a game, if you will. Um, and I think by practicing in that way, your your estimation skills will improve dramatically. Yeah, I think estimation is actually a very good point. A lot of times when I work with my kids just doing math, you know, we'll go through a whole algebra problem, and then I'll say, well, does this answer simply make sense? Are we close? And I think that's a great skill to learn because, you know, if you get the answer minus, a lot of times with my, I have a son who's in, seventh grade no I knew that he's in seventh grade and uh, you know you can tell from the type of problems they give that the answer is never going to be 17.62579 mm -hmm. it's going to be like 15 or 20 so you know he begins to realize this but I think appreciating that math is is very real is much more important than just trying to solve an equation I agree I agree all right, all right actually we're just about running out of time here but being that you offer so much to people who want to learn more, just tell me, in the last few seconds, how can people follow your work and get some of your courses? Well, if you, if you, if you Google my name, Arthur Benjamin, you might find yourself at my webpage at Harvey Mudd College, where I'm a professor of mathematics. Harvey Mudd is a school of science uh, engineering and, uh, in Southern California that were, we have excellent students. Um, you can um, you can look at my TED talks. I've given a couple of them. Uh, go to the great courses. They have wonderful books on I, I, and D, I'm sorry DVD courses and, and audio courses on everything from science, history, religion, philosophy. You name it. I've got three courses there. Um, one of them on the secrets of mental math. One on the joy of mathematics. Another on discrete mathematics. I'm currently working on a on a project for them on the mathematics of games and puzzles. That'll come out this summer. Whether you want to learn how to solve a Sudoku faster, or a Rubik's cube, or or count cards, or play backgammon, or sheshbesh, as you will. Uh, and uh, you know, you could. As a matter of fact. That's one of my great applications of mental math because you can't bring a, a calculator to the backgammon table, right? So, um, so the more um, uh, there, there's there are a lot of opportunities for doing mental math while playing games. I didn't so, even realize that uh, that backgammon was a a math kind of game. Oh, it is about as good a game for someone with a mathematical brain as any game in the world. I mean, more so than than poker, blackjack, uh, certainly chess. Um, it, it's, uh, I think it's one of the greatest games and most enjoyable games for somebody who likes to do a little bit of math while they're playing. All right. Okay, so we will look forward to that coming out this summer. Dr. Arthur yeah. Benjamin, thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.